scripture says, Whether two or three gathered in my name, touching and agree, there will he be what? In the midst. So we ain't worried about the crowd. We just gonna be in the word. You wait on people. You'll never get nowhere. You'll never get nowhere. My mother told me as a little boy, you wait on people, you won't get nowhere. God's giving you strength in your body. Do what he's called you to do. Keep on going. Amen? Amen. Uh, today we're coming from Ephesians chapter number 2, and that is in the New Testament. Ephesians chapter number 2. Starting at verse number 10. And when you have it, say amen. Ephesians chapter number 2, verse number 10. says here, for we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for the good works which God prepared before that we should walk in them. Mm -hmm. Prepared. God has called us to be workmen for his kingdom. But the message is, continue to walk in your new life in Christ Jesus. Continue to walk in your new life in Christ Jesus. Continue to walk in your new life in Christ Jesus. And if you're ever a public speaker or a minister of the gospel or pastor, my first pastor said, when you give a theme or a scripture, say it twice so that people can catch it. You just don't say it once, you say it twice. Because everybody's capacity to learn is not always quick. Some people learn at a different pace. So that's why you hear me say it twice, so people get an understanding. But as we deal with this particular text, we're dealing with the Apostle Paul, who's teaching these Ephesus, this new church, and also Colossians and Philemon and Philippians, four churches that Pat, uh, Apostle Paul is writing to, because now he's away, he's incarcerated. He's in another state, another country, and certain for, uh, foreign countries and states if you go preach Jesus Christ, they'll put you away in prison. Mm -hmm. They'll put you away for the gospel. This is for the gospel. And he was one of our leading apostles. And he was incarcerated, but he was still writing. And his letters was able to be released and sent out as you see in scripture. He was writing to them to educate them, to strengthen them in the faith, to strengthen them that they need the Lord, to strengthen them that they need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, strengthen them in their faith and in deliverance. He was giving out a lot of pointers, but it was all lined up with the scripture. Mm -hmm. When you are a pastor, you feed the flock of God. Oftentimes you feed them, you rebuke them, you chasten them, but you also bring them to a place back to love. Your pastor will always restore you or rebuke you, but it's to get the foolishness out of you. The Bible speaks about in Proverbs, um, a parent is supposed to uh, beat their children. But not to the point they beat them beyond repair. But it gets the foolishness out of them to chase them, to make sure they stand corrected. And in this Christian journey, you will be corrected, whether it be from the shepherd or from a member of the church that's seasoned and mature. You will face correction. But God wants you to follow your new life in Christ on a daily basis. There's an old Christian hymn I heard years ago said, Every day to Jesus is sweeter than the day before. And that's a true song. Those are true lyrics. But we want to continue to follow our lifestyle in Christ and make sure he's always the head of our lives. How do we continue to do that? Stay dedicated, stay prayerful, stay in the word. Simple steps. And if you can follow those instructions, you can continue to grow in the Lord. And God wants us to grow. He wants us to be spiritually mature. One dream he gave me some years ago, I was at it, sitting at a table and getting ready to eat some roast beef. But the Bible speaks about the meat of the word. He was saying in so many words, I have become spiritually mature. Corinthians chapter 3 speaks about the milk of the word and then also the meat. Because Apostle Paul was correcting them as well. Some of them were immature in their Christian journey. He said, I'm not able to feed you meat because you're still immature and you're taking milk. You can be in an adult form 
and not handle the things of God. Something's wrong with your spiritual maturity. Then all of us are on different levels. I've been saved since I was 17. Mm -hmm. Filled with the Holy Ghost at 20. Stepped into the ministry at 25. Mr. Love and the rest of them were saved before I got saved. So they can tell me more than I can tell myself. But guess what? It's all aligned up with the Word. God may give her the same scripture He may give me, but she may be a little higher than I am. We can't compare one another, but you can tell when somebody's spiritually mature. You can tell when somebody's growing, and then that growth is pushing them to another level in God. And there's different levels in God that God wants us to be spiritually mature. But verse number 10 says here, created that we should walk. Uh, the genius, the genius of God's new creation work is each in each believer. It is that we venerate the nature of the redeemed children to make good works a living possibility. Your good works. So your works are being examined. Even when you go into the church, the pastor asks you, take this and put this in the mailbox. You see how far you're going to go to that mailbox. If your pastor says, I want you to serve Holy Communion, can you follow instructions? If I say, Sister Rashid, I want you to read the morning announcements, I have to see, can your character adapt to reading the announcements? If I say, Mother, I want you to get up and sing the morning solo so God can use you so that people can be blessed. Well, I have to see if your character and your creation and your God that's the head of your life is on the same level. But you also, your works will be tested. That's what he told them. Not just by your good works, but your character. Are you in Christ? Are you following the leader? Are you following the shepherd of the house? He wants to see where you are. Now, if you get attitude of action to something, guess what? Something you haven't been broken. Something you have not been delivered. But I can't criticize you. I can pray for you. God deliver my sister and my brother and their attitude. But the Bible says a soft answer. Proverbs chapter 15. says a soft answer turns away what? Wrath. So when people ask you to do something, you say it with love. And when you do things in Christ, you do it with love. God is watching our character. While we serve him. We're just like trees. And trees represent what? Leadership. He's making sure if you're fruitful. Or are you fruitless? I'll never forget. I was at a service. At a, uh, a home going service at church. And God took me into a vision. Right in the pulpit. I was not the speaker. I was supposed to do uh, the invocation. The prayer of comfort. Somebody came in and rearranged the whole service. For what? I couldn't, I couldn't possibly tell you why. But one thing about me, I'm not one to walk in a man's house and rearrange his furniture. Because if you do that, you're out of order. You never walk into somebody's house and take over. But the person that was in charge allowed it. I knew then something was wrong. But in the midst of that vision, I seen a tree in the midst of summer. And the tree was dry and parched with no leaves. And I said, well, what are you saying to me? He said, my leaders have no fruit. He said, and even where you sit, some of the leaders that you're sitting among do not bear good fruit. And the Bible says, when the man does not bear fruit, what does he do? He cuts them off and prunes it. That's why your branches have to be pruned or broken. That's why the tree trunk has to be watered so it can not be so parched and dry. But if that tree stops being productive, that tree has to be removed. Watch what I'm telling you. You will see more leaders leave here because they stop developing good fruit. How do we stay fruitful? Stay in the word. Stay in prayer. Stay in character. Use your gifts, but make sure it's God calling you to go forward. Amen? So continue to walk in your new life in Christ Jesus. Uh, there's another scripture here uh, that I need to read. Ephesians chapter number 3, verse 16. And it says here that he would grant you according to his riches of his glory to be strengthened with might 
through his spirit in the inner man. God wants his children to be strengthened. And that's where you get your strength from. That's why when you pray, you pray for strength. That's in your inner man. Now you have to remember there's two different types of men you're dealing with in your spirit. The spirit man and the soulish man. We've already did things in our soulish man that we repented for. So God begins to clean those things out of us. We were in the world, but not of it. We did worldly things first, and then when you got saved, those worldly things uh, were deceased because you forgive it, you repent it, and now you're under the blood of Jesus Christ. Now your spirit man has to be built up by praying. Now in the old Pentecostal church, they say pray in tongues. That's true. That's a gift. Your, your, your natural man can't just wake up and just do that. That's a gift between you and God. But it's through Jesus Christ. And that is also found in the book of Acts, chapter 2, the, uh, the day of Pentecost. When they all were on one accord and filled with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke with other tongues. That still exists for today. You need to be born not just once, but born again. You have to be filled with the Holy Ghost to do that which God has called you to do. You cannot do this by natural happenstance. You cannot do according to the flesh. But your spirit man has to have height, weight, depth, breadth, and strength to go forward. As I said earlier, there's different levels in the Lord. Mm -hmm. Different levels in the Lord. And it says here, verse 16, it says, literally becoming mighty by his power, which the Holy Spirit brings to work in the believer. You need the Holy Spirit to do God's work and will. And when you receive the Holy Ghost, you receive other gifts. Mm -hmm. The word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, and the gift of prophecy. The laying on of hands. Continue to be developed as you walk in the Lord. Be developed in your mind. Don't murmur, don't complain, but allow the mind of God to rest upon you, which is the helmet of salvation. We must stay equipped. You have to keep on your full armor as you walk in this journey, in this new life in Jesus Christ. Not just physically. It's okay to dress modestly. That's good. That shows good character too. But your spirit man has to be fed. Your spirit man has to reach other levels. Your spirit man will cause other doors to open. Don't use God's name vain or as a vain philosophy. When you say the name of Jesus, say it with love. Mm -hmm. When you do things of God, do things with love. Now you have to remember this, in this Christian journey, your character will be tested. People are going to test your character. People are going to say things to you, mock you, laugh at you. They told Jesus he was Beelzebub. They called him Satan himself. Now that's harsh. And guess what? They did not have the full knowledge. The scripture says, I came unto my own and they received me not. Everybody is not going to receive you. Everybody's not going to applaud you. Everybody's not going to walk with you. Some people don't care if you say it, but they're still disrespectful. But you ever notice when people disrespect you as a believer, something always happens to them? And they'll come back and say, could you pray for me? But now see, when you say, ask you, can, they, can you pray for them? That's your character being tested. Are you going to walk in love or are you going to walk in your flesh? Or are you going to say, no, I don't need to pray for you because you just cussed me out. I've had to walk up to people and pray for them, even after they told me off. Now, if you can do that, you got some good character. <laughs> I know one woman some years ago, may she rest in peace, I won't say her name and I won't embarrass her because I don't do that. Miss Love know me, I don't do stuff like that. And you do too, but she too. Yeah, I don't do stuff like that to people. That woman just kept calling me a liar. You're such a liar, I hate you, I hate you. And one day she was sitting in the door frame of her house and I thought she was getting ready to tell me I saw across the street. I crossed the street because I got tired of her calling me a liar. She said, no, 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 I'm not gonna mess with you today. She said, baby, come here, I'm so sorry. And she apologized with humility. And this showed me she did love God and she was a Christian. She said, come here. She said, I got seven kids. She said, I can't get none of them to come down here and share through my hair. Now, y'all remember back in the day, I used to do hair. And uh, I said, they want, mother, they want to do your hair. She said, baby, they want to share through my hair. They want to clean my carpet. They want to even help me to my house. And I'm in a wheelchair now. 
She said, could you please come by on Fridays and shampoo my hair? And the Holy Ghost, see this is why I'm telling you something, the Holy Spirit is something else. It's very intelligent. Not in it nor a thing, but him. He said to me, help her. Just like that. That Friday I was there, I shampooed her hair. She said, could you go to the store? She said, now I can trust you to take this card and get some money out of my card. And maybe still, I said, no, I've never been a thief. My mother always said, stealing is not optional. If you want something, ask for it. She said, would you take this, this is my pen number, and you come back with this, and I'm gonna bless you when you come back. I walked to the store, I kept moving. Somebody asked you to do something, stay humble, stay quiet about things. Went to the store, got her money for her, brought it back, she said, thank you. She said, now I, got, I told you earlier, I got seven kids. She said, you do better than my seven. People ain't gonna never forget, or will not forget, the good that you've done for them. Went back and helped her for three years. Then she moved out of town. And one night, I had a dream about her. She was in Virginia, and she was coming down a dirt road in a wheelchair, electric wheelchair, coming back to Buffalo. And I woke up from the dream, and I called her daughter. I said, y'all need to get prepared. Your mother's coming back home. Mm -hmm. Didn't that woman come back home a year later? I tell people all the time, pay attention to your dreams. And she said, she said, we're asking how I can help her. I said, this, this season of my life, I can't help you this time. Your children have to help you. I said, I respect you as a mother of the church and as a woman of God. But at this season, I cannot help you. She was upset. But somebody did, it wouldn't help her. Five years after she passed away. You can't help everybody unless God send you to help them. Because if you can tell when it's God, it'll be a peace. And if you go help somebody and God moved away from you, moved them away from you, and then they came back and they caused a lot of aggravation in your Christian journey, guess what? You weren't supposed to help them. People come and go in our lives. People come and go. Yes. So God wants us to help people, but help them in the name of the Lord. With humility and with the spirit of meekness. But now God ain't tell you to let people run all over you. Some people you have to correct. Some people you can deal with a guy and say, okay, that's enough. Let them go. And it's hard to let people go sometimes. Amen? It's hard to let some folks go. So learn to help people, but do it with a meek and humble spirit. Verse 16, I'll say it again. Uh, that he would grant you according to his riches of glory to be strengthened with the might through the spirit of the inner man. Your inner man has to be strengthened on a daily basis. Your spirit man has to go to other levels of height and in depthness. Your spirit man is what God is looking at. He's seeing if you are in the image and in the likeness of him. Mm -hmm. Every day you look in the mirror, you're not just looking at you, but you're looking at the image of what God has made you to be. And we're dealing with who? Apostle Paul. When AD 60, 61, where Asia Minor, uh, why? To strengthen faith in God. And how is this? A teaching. You teach God's people. And how we teach the Word of God and with divine revelation. Some things occur in our lives in the scripture through divine revelation. Mm -hmm. So that's how God wants us to be on today. Now to be develop or continue to walk in our new life in Christ, you have to be shaped, molded, redeveloped, and in a Christ-like stature. Also, the process. Now, when you got saved, you wouldn't step on the road, you wouldn't do none of that stuff. You wouldn't do none of that. You just so holy and just so different. But guess what? That's the beginning phase. Now, when you get saved and go through the process, that's a whole other phase. What am I trying to tell you? You have to be reprocessed. Anybody can sit off for a gift in a box. But when that box is finished being used, guess where it goes back? To the recycle. We go back to the one that made us. So he recycles us. Redevelops us. Shaping our character. Shaping our mind. Shaping our spirit man and our inner man. Now this is one thing we have to stop doing in Pentecostalism in the church. We speak in a lot of tongues, but our character is just so bad. You can't take nothing, you can't take a comment, you can't take a remark, you cut your eyes at people, 
trying to trip folks. I mean, just bad, bad spirits. Uh, I heard a woman say, Jackie McCullough, and I laughed so hard when I heard her say it. She said, they act like beasts. I said, Bishop McCullough. She said, some of the people in the church act like animals. And this is what she said at the end. At the end, this is what she said, animals do it better. And then I cracked up and I died laughing. And I said, no, she didn't. She said, an animal will treat you better than some of these saints. Because we have bad, bad character. But we don't ever want to show the love of God. And we always want something for nothing. How to get over. But never help. God is looking at our character. From the time you were born again to the time you are now, God is looking at us. One woman said, she, somebody said something to her in the church and said it was so nasty and so harsh. She said, if you say you in Christ, I don't want nothing to do with them because your attitude is so bad and walked out the church door. Guess what? You caused that certain person to go back into the world and sin more. And we're going to be beat for the things we do know and we don't know. You're going to be held accountable for causing somebody to go back into the world. That's the soul. So when I see people doing what they're doing, I don't judge. I pray for their selfish man and their spirit man that they'll come to know Christ. God loves everybody. He may not love the sin, but he also may love the person. So we have to take our time in Christianity. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. This is the New Testament. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Turn there. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And it says here, loud and clear, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become what? New. So every day, God is pulling away at the old man so we can get into the new man. It's a process. Stop telling people how holy you are. You don't have to define that to nobody. They'll see by your characteristics. They'll see by your attitude, how you think, how you speak, how you give, how you help out. All that is being tested as new believers. He wants to see where you are. Mm -hmm. And God's going to test us. He's not sending us to a place of temptation. But he's putting in the place of us saying, they can handle this. They can walk with me. They know how to handle spiritual warfare. They know how to pray. They know how to fast. They know how to give. And one thing we have to learn as a believer, always show the first fruit of the Spirit, which is love. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. We have to show the love of God first. My prayer in this day is that the love of God will rest upon God's people. We've already shown people who we are but we oftentimes, we show too much flesh. I don't come in here bragging, oh, I'm a master of prophetic fire and word ministries, and you're going to sit down. That's not how you talk to people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who's preaching and pastoring, but they don't ever want to start from scratch. They don't want this. But guess what? God in his infant wisdom said, Randy Newman want it. Randy Newman to do it. And not complain about it. Y'all see people come and go, come and go, come and go. Guess what? Y'all have a soul. Some people don't want to serve. Some people just want to preach, preach, and preach, and preach. If you can recite all their sermons, guess what? They haven't preached. <laughs> it's the truth. If you can recite them from the beginning to the end, they haven't preached. Those are just words. That's why I was shooting over there cracking my thighs because you don't tell me the truth. Uh huh. Amen. Amen. Chapter 5, verse 17, it says here, now we're going to hear Apostle Paul. Paul's most uh, characteristic expression of what is or means to be a Christian Christ's death, resurrection for us, and our 
identification with him by faith may extend as a new creation. Possibility at a present new creation is only apparently experienced, partially experienced, but also to be our focus as the completion of recreation is assured. Our relationship with Christ affects every aspect of our lives. So it's every aspect of our lives. From the time we wake up and our feet hit the floor, you should be in prayer immediately, thanking God for another day. Through who? Through Christ Jesus. You should never miss the opportunity to pray. Now this morning, I, I went into that area again. Uh, woke up about 3.30 or 4 o'clock and went into prayer. Worship first, went into prayer, prayed a while, and started seeing visions. And I know these people, and I'm like, what is they doing here? I mean like an open flat screen TV, mother love. Just started going into visions, and I'm like, wait a minute, what is this? Sometimes God wakes us up just to talk to us. If I made you, I should be able to speak to you. And I saw visions and then went to sleep and had another dream. I said, okay, uh, I got you. Sometimes God deliver us from certain places, people, peoples, and things so we don't become contaminated. And he showed me that dream last night, and I mean, I can't share it right now, but that dream was so precise until I was scared. Mm -hmm. I walked up in a church in a dream, a prophetic dream last night to go sit in the pulpit and this one evangelist stopped me and said, no, you can't walk there. Then I seen the leaders going up and they all had on green. You ever heard that term, envy, green, or envy of green, or green of envy? Envy with green? And I said, ooh, he said, that's why I delivered you out of there. See, you never know why God pulled you out of certain places. So you won't become like them. He didn't say judge them, he said pray for them. Because all of us have sinned. All of us have fallen. Yeah. And never tell you something else while I'm recording this. Don't be telling everybody when you fall. Never tell people when you, church folks, when you have fallen. Because they're going to repeat it the wrong way. The things you, those secrets you got, those inabilities and capabilities you have, take them to the Lord of prayer. Call somebody on a prayer line that don't know you and you don't have to give your real name. Nothing wrong with asking why to pray for you. And you yourself, as a Christian, have to develop a prayer life. So what am I saying? As we continue to walk in our new life in Christ, stay faithful, stay developed, stay keen with discernment, stay in the scripture, stay fasting and praying, and don't let everybody speak into your life. Everybody that say they speak into the name of God, that's not judging. It's not of him. If you look at the fruit on the tree, you can tell that don't sound like God. You will know the difference because when somebody speaks into your life, the Spirit of God will bear witness. If somebody speaks into your life and you felt nothing, guess what? It was nothing. Mm -hmm. Stay in the Lord. Walk in Christ. Walk in your new life. But as my friend would say, I've heard, uh, she's Bishop and Dr. Iona Locke, and she said it very clearly. She said, walk softly in the Lord. That means take baby steps. Don't be anxious. When you take steps in God, you don't just go across here. You take steps. The Bible says a good man's steps is ordered by who? The Lord. Mm -hmm. He don't want us to walk too fast in our Christian journey. Because he wants to see what we can handle and what we cannot handle. And some tests that we go through, we really can't handle. I mean, it's been tested and almost felt like he was about to quit and give up. I felt that before. Felt like I was alone. I said, God, where you at in here? I don't feel God nowhere in this. But you still wake up the next day and go, yes, we go the first thing we go to. Not to the telephone, not to the TV, but we find ourselves right back in prayer. Because we know God exists. So in this Christian journey, continue to walk in your new life in Christ Jesus. But be stable. Be still sometimes, but most of all, seek his face. So I pray that even on today that this word was a blessing to those who are here. And there's one more word, uh, we call it pneuma. Pneuma. Pneuma means new life in Hebrew. And that's how God has called us out of the old life into the pneuma. 
And that's why the scripture says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things are passed away, behold, all things become new. Hebrew word called pneuma, and become more active in the Lord. Not just on Sunday, but through the week. Give somebody a scripture. Call somebody and pray with them. Those are good works, and God is watching the intent of our heart. Uh, and also we accept a divine revelation when God wants to reveal and when God wants to speak to you. Accept this divine revelation. Now, last night, that was the easy night. Now, I feel the anointing is thick in here today. Not many people, but guess what? You got to keep going forward. You can't let people stop you. If you wait on people and look to the people, you'll never get nowhere. When you are called into this type of ministry, you're going to see people come and go. And always remember this, even as a believer, people do what they want to do. You can't stop them. You can't control people. Some people you will let go, and some people you will accept. Amen? Mm -hmm. So stay focused in your new life in Christ Jesus. That's the word for this morning. And as my first pastor said, it don't take all day to minister to people. Because they only will remember 30% of what you just taught. Some people's mind is going to start with choir. Singing solos, or you know, stuff like that. But you don't want our focus to be on people. So when you come in, come and pray. And that's what we're going to start doing too. If we start coming here, we're going to come and pray. The same thing on Thursdays. Come and pray. Not just me praying, but the body of Christ praying. Like I tell people, God will always use me. He may use somebody else. God is not selfish. Amen? Amen. So let's close out in the word of prayer. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we humble ourselves before your throne. And God, we thank you for another day and opportunity to, to deliver the word of God and know the word of God and apply the word to our hearts. And that we will continue to walk in Christ Jesus in our new life in you, Lord. And that you be edified, exalted, that you be lifted in the name of Jesus, taken to higher heights and deeper depths in your word. That we remain focused, prayerful, fasting, and seeking your face. Help us to know the scripture and not just quote it, but live it. And redevelop our character and our thinking. And Father, we honor you right now for who you are. And God, we say thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. That's all God wants us to do. Stay focused. Don't let nobody distract you. And when people call you, distracting you, let them focus.